In this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of some of the work we did at a church in Missouri a few weeks ago. It was a pretty complicated install, and I'm not gonna walk through every little bit of it because it's just gonna take way too much time, but what I am gonna show you is something that a lot of you are thinking about doing or would like to do at some point but haven't figured out how, and that is how to run live video to your screens in the room but on demand, so not 100% of the time. Now this is a kind of a different setup than a lot of us are used to. If we've seen IMAG at large churches that just 100% of the time, that's what they've got going on on the side screens are their camera feeds. This church that I was working with in Missouri wanted to be able to do that during worship um, and during the, during the sermon, but not during other parts of the service so as not to be super distracting. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna jump into the video I shot there post install. Um, and when I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of the camera setup, but primarily what we did in the tech booth as far as routing all of the signal goes uh, with ProPresenter and with all of the adapters and the matrices that they had at the church to make this happen. So let's go check that out. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you are our cameras, right? We're gonna start with our inputs and work our way through the system. So let's take a look at the cameras. All right, so the first thing we're starting with is a Sony NPF 770 4K camcorder. The church had this to begin with, so we decided to leverage it for the system, obviously. Like a lot of you, they were just streaming straight from it into a computer. Uh, so we wanted to obviously continue to use it, but give us a lot more flexibility. So let me take a closer look here. What we decided to do with this camera, because it's the only one that's not a PTZ in this new system, is we actually put a Hollyland Mars 400S on top. So we have a transmitter back in the control room, but this is gonna let the church use this camera for baptisms, pre-service videos in the lobby, as well as just making it an A-cam here in the back center, um, but giving them the flexibility to move this without having to worry about wires and cables. So you'll see here, this uh, camera, like a lot of Sonys, are actually kind of a pain to work with when it comes to outputting stuff. And so I actually had to output over SDI into the Hollyland because if you use HDMI, it automatically converts it out to 60 frames a second, and I didn't want that for my system. And I almost thought we were gonna be up a creek, but it turns out if you run SDI versus HDMI, you can set it at 30, which is what I wanted. So if you ever run into that problem, it's really that simple, which is kind of dumb, but so be it. So that's our Cam A. And then right behind us here, we're at the sound booth. Um, we've got straight up in the back a PTZ camera. So this is not a PTZ optics camera. This is a camera the church had from somebody else, so we built the system around it. It's a data video PTC 140. So there are three of those. This is our kind of our B camera. Uh, I always prefer to have two cameras in the center so that they're different widths, but the same perspective of being head on, because head on is by far the most engaging angle you can be at. So that's why we went with a second camera right behind our first camera right next to me. Obviously you got the rest of the production booth here. We've got a new Mac Mini M1 right here running ProPresenter. And as you can see right here, the famous Sonnet Echo Express, and actually this is not the Decklink Duo, this is the Decklink 8K Pro. The reason is that the Decklink Duos are backordered, but Decklink 8K Pros are almost never backordered, and I think they're only 100 or 200 dollars more. So it's actually a great situation um, to buy this card if you need something soon, because it does the exact same thing, just supports higher resolutions if you ever want to be um, doing 4K infrastructure, but really it just does the same job for a slight and modest increase in price. So I think it's a good solution instead of waiting two to four months. And I'll give you guys a closer look at our system setup here in a second. Here's a trusty, Trusty helper, Austin. Oh, hey, everybody. Austin, how are you doing, friend? I'm doing well. I ran 900 plus feet of coaxial cable up into the rafters. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of work. <laughs> Did you learn anything? Uh, I learned a ton from my good friend, Spencer Tresker, who runs Church Video School. <laughs> Austin is not being, actually, Austin is hired for this job, so I guess he is being endorsed or paid to endorse. Um, Austin's gonna do a quick video later on how to make your own SDI cables because there aren't a lot of good videos online. We had to figure it out, uh, he had to figure it out, and uh, he's, become, he's become pretty good at it. I might keep him around. Not anymore. <laughs> 
All right, I'm gonna take you guys inside the computer that we set up because I wanna show you what we did to create kind of an interesting uh, route for the different screens at this church. So I'll show you, but we have, they have a center projector, they have two side TVs, they have a stage display, and then they also have a lobby TV, and then a cafe TV that's daisy chained all the way down to their kids area. So they essentially have four, five different displays trying to be supported plus a live stream. So uh, it was interesting trying to figure this out and I'll show you physically what we routed, but inside ProPresenter here, I uh, will show you what we did to create these outputs. So this is, uh, we're on Sunday, we just had service a few hours ago. But if I go to screens and configure screens, what you're gonna see here is we've got four outputs from the Mac Mini using the Decklink Duo. So the stage display is just a HDMI dongle, which is turned off right now, but it's display one, it's a TV right behind me. That was a super easy run to figure out. The projector is actually an SDI run from the sound booth, so I basically bypassed a converter they used to have and went straight from the Decklink Duo all the way to it over uh, output number two at 1080p 30 frames and I've got desktop video set up here. I have a video on how to set up this type of deal with desktop video set up on my channel so I'll link to that here. Side TVs, um, we're actually uh, getting a uh, signal sent from Decklink channel three which is actually connector two. Um, that's super fun to figure out at 1080p 30. And then the run to the switcher is set to 1080p at 2997, which is our video standard. So that's going out channel one. So we've got three discrete sends so that we can send one thing to the side TVs, one thing to the center projector, and one thing to the switcher. And the reason we did that is because they wanted during worship and during the sermon to have the side TVs have the live video iMag come back from the switcher, but have the center camera or center projector rather actually have the uh, ProPresenter slides. And so we configure things to be able uh, to do that by sending two outputs here from the display so that sometimes we can have video and sometimes we can have slides. And what you're not seeing here is that I have as our fourth SDI connection, I have switcher input on input number one. So it's mislabeled from before in OBS, but this is the SDI in on channel four on the Decklink 8K. And this is our um, basically our aux out from our switcher, which is set to the program feed, but it could be anything uh, w that we want it to be, but it's set to program, so it just simply follows. Um, and everyone in the room on the side TV sees a copy of the live stream video channel. So that is how we configured things. Um, something I wanna show you here is how to create some simple macros to be able to, to switch between those two. So let's go to the top of our set and we're gonna go, let's say we're running a countdown here um, and we had some announcement slides. All right, so right now I've got nothing but slides, okay, in the front of the room on all three outputs. So what I'll show you that we did on this backside here or on the inside is that here we've got um, edit actions, right? We've got a macro that's a Sunday morning pre-service and inside that macro, I have placed an audience look. And so I've created a, a couple of looks. So if we go to screens and edit looks, I'll show you that our pre-service, the projector is always gonna have our announcement slides and media and the side TVs are following and the switcher is following. But as soon as we go to worship, what I did here, and this is all loaded in a macro called song with side TV video, um, is that on the side TVs, I turned off all the layers and enabled the video input. Um, switcher is still just getting lyrics. I turned off media so that their worship motion backgrounds don't go to the switcher and don't uh, block the video and cause really a lot of problems with keying. And then our projector output is essentially the same. The sermon is essentially the same. I think we took the announcements layer off, but essentially side TVs are getting video input and nothing else, because remember, if you get your video input back from your switcher, it already has graphics and lyrics on it. So if you add any of these back in, they're just doubling up and making a mess. And then they made a prayer one where, again, prayer and pre-service are gonna be the two where um, they're wanting media on the side screens. And so if I go down to song one and I click here, um, Worship backgrounds in the center. You can see over here, projector outputs got this. Our side TVs have just this. Uh, we don't have any video running right now, but you do see our key is on still actually back there. Um, and so what we're getting up front is we got a uh, good slide in the center and off to the side, we would have video with words on top. And so that is how we are allowing iMag without committing to it 100% of the time 
by hard routing the video to those side screens, which was an option, but by routing it through ProPresenter, um, we're able to give ourselves a flexibility to do that the way that we wanted. Okay, so I wanna show you guys what I did here on the desk routing wise. Obviously it could be cleaner, but you know, who couldn't say that about their tech booth area? So what we've got going on, you've got our, our main outputs, sorry about that, um, from our DeckLink 8K here. So this is channel four, this is video in, this is actually channel two going out on three, this is channel three going out on two, and then one is one. This is going all the way down to our switcher. So we actually made this cable, which is why it looks different than the other ones. Um, but what we have coming back is we've got this SDI to HDMI 3G converter, which you guys are very familiar with. But we've got a video coming in right here. This is labeled aux, and it's our aux feed, We're at a 230 foot run coming from the control room into this to convert to HDMI, which is then going down and going into the matrix that they have for the rest of the building. But what I did is I just used a loop out here, SDI loop out, and ran that into channel four, and that's how I'm getting ProPresenter into, um, or sorry, how I'm getting our live video into ProPresenter um, without having to run another cable, as I'm just using the pass-through feature. So don't overlook the pass-through feature on these converters. It can really, really save a ton of time. Um, this is going to our side TVs, SDI to HDMI going out. And then they had this matrix that we're working with. So we have two inputs here, main ProPresenter feed coming straight out of the Mac mini, um, or sorry, coming out of this converter right here. And then we've got switcher aux feed, which is that pass-through channel that's going here so that we can have video going to the lobby TVs all the time because it's a hard route all the way from the aux feed in the switcher through the converter into this... Uh, matrix here and then it goes down and goes into their distribution network uh, on its own essentially. So you see here side TVs, um, cafe TV and beyond which is another run and then the foyer TV is its own uh, destination. And so those are all pre-set up so I worked with it to change our inputs. I redid the outputs a little bit and that's how they're able to get all their outputs where they wanted to. So let me uh, continue the tour here and I'll show you guys the rest of the room, this place seats about 300. Um, so they've done a lot, a lot of work. The church has grown from about 40 people five years ago to about 250. Um, so a lot of good stuff going on here. This is camera three. Um, we mounted this one here um, so that we can get a nice full uh, stage shot from not too steep of an angle. Um, and then our final camera is up here in the ceiling, camera four. So camera four, um, is actually facing, it can basically turn to the baptism here to get people's baptisms from above, but it can also point like right now, it's pointing right at me here in the front. So it sees announcements and anything the pastors do here in the front, but it also shows the worship area. And as I found out today, this as being an Assemblies of God church, very charismatic, has a lot of people coming down to the literal altar for prayer, ministry, uh, just to worship more closely with the Lord here. So um, it's actually a really great shot to get back and see people in the building, see people raising their hands, praying, laying hands on each other, whatever they do here. But it's, uh, it's important to consider that when building your system to be able to show context when you're at, at home and online and all you see is the stage. Sometimes you don't know if the room's empty. So if your room is empty, don't show it. But if it's not, it's nice to give people context for uh, what's going on um, in the room. Well, I hope this has been informative for you. There's certainly more than one way to accomplish live video in your room and online. Obviously, this is just one way to do it, but it is an interesting way I hadn't done before. It might be a good solution for some of you looking for the same thing, but not wanting to go 100% into live video on your screens just because you're not sure you've got enough volunteers to pull it off every Sunday. So if you want the ability to do this, but not commit to it every single minute of every single service, this is gonna be a great setup for you. That's gonna do it for this video today. Make sure you check out the free church video gear guide in the description below. It's got helpful links for the best gear for churches specifically, and it's gonna help you find what you need for your budget. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.